everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this rather unusual box. <laughs> That's what it is. Um, it's using the Forever Free Papers by First Edition. I have used these lovely little Simply Creative balloon dies to use um, as kind of little embellishments, little dangles there at the end of the ribbon. I've got this lovely flower topper with these little cascading kind of stems and stuff. Um, and then I've just decorated all of the six, no, yeah, six panels. And I really, really like it, it's nice and tall. The next one I do is gonna be a little bit taller because this was kind of my prototype. But I'm really, yeah, really like the way it's turned out. So pop that to one side, bring over here everything you need. So I've got a couple of other different pieces that I'm using for this one. So for the balloons, I've used the holographic Dovecraft card, which I'll show you in a minute. And I've already gone ahead and die cut them. And that's the Simply Creative balloon die there really handy I've loved using that one and then I've already prepared all of that which I will show you in a second but this is the holographic card which I shared in my unboxing really really good 10 sheets of A4 and I'll share all the links to that one and then as you've probably already seen this is the forever free 12 by 12 paper pack which I'm really enjoying using so again all those links will be shared over on my blog so to make the box you need a piece of 12 by 12 cardstock and we go straight into the scoring. As you can see, I've already um, put some pencil marks and done the scoring just so it's kind of easy for you guys to understand. So choose your 12 inch side. If you're using directional paper, you want it to be the right way up at this point. And you're gonna score at one and seven eighths of an inch, three and three quarters of an inch, five and five eighths of an inch, seven and a half inches, nine and three eighths of an inch, and 11 and a quarter. Okay, so you've got a three quarters of an inch tab here. I might trim that down, it might make it easier when we come to fold it, but we'll do that in a minute. Then rotate your cardstock, and then you wanna score at one and seven eighths of an inch, and at seven and seven eighths of an inch. Okay, so that is all the scoring we need to do with the scoreboard and you can see there all your lines. Okay, so next what we're gonna do, so you've got those smallest squares here, so these are one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths, all these squares, you want them at the bottom and your three quarters of an inch tab should be on the right hand side. What we're doing next is we're working within these rectangles here. So you should have one, two, three, four, five, six rectangles. And we're gonna create these triangles. Now I've drawn them in pencil. You don't need to, all you'll be doing is scoring these, but I've gone over them in pencil just so you can see them easier in this video. So the easiest way to do this, now because it's a one and seven eighths of an inch wide rectangle piece, the middle point is obviously just just under an inch so it's it's just a funny measurement so the best thing to do is just eyeball it so I've just got my pencil and literally I've just roughly put a little pencil mark in the middle of each of the tops of these rectangles so that's one rectangle there just put a little pencil mark another one if you want to use your ruler and just roughly use the little these are all your not on that one there yeah on the first bit here you've got all those 1 16th of an inch so it's that little measurement is here where you want to be measuring just underneath that one inch that's the halfway mark okay and you want to do that within each of those six then when you've done that you're going to score from the pencil mark down to the bottom left and down to the bottom right of each of those rectangles so then you will have these six triangles now i've already scored all of these but i thought if i just went over them in pencil it would make it much much easier for you to do so each one of these lines has been scored so you just want to use your metal ruler with your stylus from the pencil mark and score right the way down always put your stylus down first and then line your ruler up that way you'll get a perfect join from point to point okay so i'm now going to rub out all of that pencil marks if you want to go ahead and get everything burnished Okay, so I've burnished all my main score lines and then when it comes to these ones here, just very carefully kind of start to work them and then you can just fold them right over and then again, it starts to get a bit easier as you go along. And then when you get to like one here where it's a join, that's what you want to do. You want to push in this main line 
and then you can push those two together and just make sure when you get down to this bit here just use your stylus or something just to kind of really embed that point so you get it really nice and sharp like so see now I've got a really nice triangle there at the bottom nice point okay so I'll go along just do that on all of those okay so that's now what you should have you see you really start to see it all come together so whilst it's flat and like this but even before I do any cutting I'm going to stick down all my panels again just so it helps you really see how this all looks okay so you will have six of these one two three four five six and they are going to go in your six longest panels and you will have a nice little border. You've got your tab here on the right hand side and remember those one and um, seven eighths of an inch squared squares should be at the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and get them all stuck down. Okay, so that's those six all stuck down there. They look really nice, I love this print. And now we can start cutting. So along the bottom here, so these six squares, you're just gonna cut up each one to that first score line, just straight up. We don't need to take any like little wedges off of the sides, which usually I do because of the way we're going to be sticking this. You actually want to keep them in the perfect kind of square shape that they are. So, and then you get to the very end here. And with that piece, you're then going to cut off and remove that whole tab like so. Now, I did say about trimming this, which I think I'm going to do. You can obviously do it before or after, it's entirely up to you. I'm just going to pop it in there and I'm just going to cut it in half again. So it just becomes a 3 eighths of an inch-ish tab, quarter of an inch, it doesn't really matter. It just will help when we go to fold it all together. Okay, so I've just shrunk that down a little bit there. Next, we need to do a little bit of hole punching. So it's again easier to do all this when it is flat. So flip it around so now with those squares are facing away from us. And along this part here, you've got your point and then you've got these two upside down kind of triangle pieces and then your point upside down. It's in all the upside down parts that we're gonna be doing our hole punches. Now again, I'm just eyeballing this. You can see there and on that first piece as well. So what I'm doing, I'm just punching either side of the point of the triangle. So again, there's the point of the triangle. So I just wanna do either side and again, just work your way along and that way when we put it together it's all kind of concealed like so okay got it pretty much straight there like I said you don't really need to get your pencil out and ruler but now that is where you want to be before we put this together all right and then we've got all these pieces here so first of all flip it over and along your tab now I'm just going to take a little wedge off the top there and that piece there. Now you can use double sided tape if you want, I'm going to use my wet glue and you just want to run just a small amount, again making sure you concentrate on nearer the score line side rather than the outer side, all the way up to the very top just on that tab. Fold that over and then you can fold that one over because there are equal sides. So it should, which it does, completely fold flat. And you get that perfectly lined up. So I'm just gonna make sure that gets all stuck down. Okay, now, as you can see, the top there where it's gone over, I've got a tiny bit where it's gone, you see? Just gone into my hole punched area. So if that happens, I'm just gonna go in there and just re-punch that piece there. Okay, so then open up your shape there. Now we're going to be working from this end here, so all our squares. So decide where's your front and your back. Really, you want your join to be your back. So this is the back here for me. So, yeah, so that back one, okay, the front one will be flat. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so that one is going to go down last. Okay, so I'm going to keep that folded back that way and keep that one folded back that way. Okay. So there's my back, here's my front. Choose either pairs, but the, the opposites are gonna be joined together. So I'm gonna fold this one in first, and I'm just gonna put some glue just at the end. So just the edge there. And then bring this one over and just make sure that they stick down and they're completely flush with each other. 
So both of their sides are completely straight. Okay, you can get your finger under there. You can also grab a ruler, put the ruler underneath like so, and you can just apply some pressure like so. Okay, so then the next one, so this one here, I'm going to pop some glue. Again, it's about half an inch that I'm covering, but it doesn't matter if it does go over. And again now, just make sure that the sides completely marry up and they're nice and straight, like so. Now also at this point, what we can do is just splodge a little bit of glue under each side there. And again, I'm gonna pop my ruler, like so, and you can just make sure you get it all nice and stuck down. And the last ones, you can see they just perfectly go together. So all we need to do now is pop a little bit of glue within this area here, just so that they all stick down nicely. And then again, pop some glue over the top of that one and just, just move them just so they're nice and straight. And then with the last ones, flip it over and pop your ruler inside and just Make sure everything's nice and flat. Now, if you want to, if for some reason maybe you've you know just got a bit of a, a mess or it's not quite straight, you can see now you can die cut a circle and you could put that over there if you just want to tidy it up a little bit. And now it's just down to finishing off the details. So this one here, I'm going to stick and it's going to just slightly come up over this part here. So again, just pop some glue in the middle part there and making sure it's nice and straight. I can just pop my hand in there again just to apply some pressure, like so. And then with the flower, again, this is completely optional, but what I've got is all these pieces here that I just die cut just from a random one that I had. I've got all my uh, little hole punched pieces there. And all I've done is, I'm not gonna use that glue, I'll bring in my other glue. It's just popped a little bit on the top side and then stuck it on each of the leaves, the main leaves. But then I fold it down like that. So once that's stuck and that you can kind of fold down and you can see now how it's going to kind of hang down. It's, it's just random, I know, but I just thought, it, yeah, it just looked quite nice to finish the top of that gift box. So I'm just going to go around and stick the rest of them down. Okay, so you can see what I've done there and then just fold each one kind of back in on itself and then they will just hang down and just uh, so just another nice way you can see how that looks. So that's that piece. Got a, just a rough piece of cardstock here and yeah, that'll do. It's about one inch by, once you see what I do, you'll, it doesn't really matter. But basically you're just going to make it into like a little tube so just kind of curl it around like so, all right. And then you're gonna pop a bit of glue on the outer sides, just a very thin bit like that and like that. In fact, I've probably made it thicker than it needs to be. You just wanna create like a little tunnel. So I'm gonna stick one side, so there's the back side. So you can see how I'm sticking it down there. And then I'm just gonna roll the other side and you just wanna tuck it under and you're creating a tube basically like so, you see there? And I'll grab my stylus there just to push in, stick that glue down. But that could be half that size, it doesn't need to be that long. Um, and we're just gonna thread the ribbon through it and it's just a nice way to keep that flower sitting perfectly on the top of the box, like so. Okay, so with the triangle on the front, you've got your ribbon. You're gonna go inside first and you're basically putting each kind of pair there so you've got the triangle and there's this these pair there's this pair here those are always going to be together so you're going to go in from behind the triangle and then back in that next one okay so you're just focusing on these so the next one that way and that means the ribbon just gets completely concealed and you just see the triangular pieces so again, I'm just weaving it in and out, in and out. Okay, so it's gonna be finishing all inside the box. That's how you want it to be, okay? And then you can see we start to kind of bring it all together like 
so pull it back out again and just make sure you've got an even amount of ribbon on each side I just need to bring that pull that round again just so I've got even amounts doesn't matter if one's slightly longer than the other because it does look quite nice with them kind of draping down differently so then I've got my flower okay so now you just want to thread that through okay so pop in whatever it is obviously that you're wrapping it's a little bit fiddly but just pull in it will all gather very easily kind of squeeze the card first and then pull the ribbon and then that flower will want to sit over the top like so those bits just need to be folded down a little bit more like so and then just tie kind of a loose loose-ish knot underneath everything so all of the flower and there you have it actually my ribbon is very long I could probably go shorter which I will probably have to do redo my little balloons but that's okay but you can see there how that and I need to put a little embellishment in my flower as well but now that sits perfectly on top pull in my box a little bit more there like so and there I just think it looks really nice it's just a different way to finish off the top of that unusual box but yeah I think it looks really nice there's that one there you can see again you just need to make sure it's all pulled nice and tight so put what you've got in there I don't really want to pull mine too tight because then I won't get it back out because then the whole point is that person will open it and if they rip it they rip it it doesn't matter but there you go so you can see the difference from the one I've done before I think I prefer the slightly taller one and that one won't fit one of those um you know those bottles in whereas this one will but also like you you know the nice craft beers and things like that and also like you get the um, non-alcoholic as well and you also get like um, body bath you know things that come in bottles like this and lots of cosmetics I mean there's tons of different things that would fit but yeah I think they're I think they're really cool so that's what I've done so I hope you've liked it I need to adjust that ribbon and stick my little bit on that but you'll see all of that in the photos anyway but there you have it so I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial as always if you have please give me a there we go thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more thanks for watching bye